Leadership is not a rank. Leadership is not a position. Leadership is a decision. Leadership is a choice. It has nothing to do with your position in the organization. If you decide to look after the person to the left of you and look after the person to the right of you, you have become a leader. Sometimes you're the problem. We've seen this happen all too recently with our new men of science and empirical uh, studiers and these men of finance who are smarter than the rest of us until the thing collapsed. And they blamed everything else except themselves. And my point is, is take accountability for your actions. You can take all the credit in the world for the things that you do right, as long as you also take responsibility for the things you do wrong. It must be a balanced equation. You don't get it one way and not the other. You get to take credit when you also take accountability. You want to be an elite warrior. It's not about how tough you are. It's not about how smart you are. It's not about how fast you are. If you want to be an elite warrior, you better get really, really good at helping the person to the left of you and helping the person to the right of you. Because that's how people advance in the world. The world is too dangerous and the world is too difficult for you to think that you can do these things alone. If you find your spark, I commend you. Now, who are you going to ask for help and when are you going to accept help when it's offered? Learn that skill. Learn by practicing helping each other. It'll be the single most valuable thing you ever learn in your entire life. To accept help when it's offered and to ask for it when you know that you can't do it. The amazing thing is when you learn to ask for help, you'll discover that there are people all around you who've always wanted to help you. They just didn't think you needed it because you kept pretending that you had everything under control. And the minute you say, I don't know what I'm doing, I'm stuck, I'm scared, I don't think I can do this, you will find that lots of people who love you will rush in and take care of you. But that'll only happen if you learn to take care of them first. You will be told your whole life that you need to learn to listen. I would say that you need to learn to be the last to speak. I see it in boardrooms every day of the week. Even people who consider themselves good leaders, who may actually be decent leaders, will walk into a room and say, here's the problem, here's what I think, but I'm interested in your opinion, let's go around the room. It's too late. The skill to hold your opinions to yourself until everyone has spoken does two things. One, it gives everybody else the feeling that they have been heard. It gives everyone else the ability to feel that they have contributed. And two, you get the benefit of hearing what everybody else has to think before you render your opinion. The skill is really to keep your opinions to yourself. If you agree with somebody, don't nod yes. If you disagree with somebody, don't nod no. Simply sit there, take it all in, and the only thing you're allowed to do is ask questions so that you can understand what they mean and why they have the opinion that they have. You must understand from where they are speaking, why they have the opinion they have, not just what they are saying. And at the end, you will get your turn. It sounds easy, it's not. Practice being the last to speak. Remember this, as you gain fame, as you gain fortune, as you gain position and seniority, people will treat you better. They will hold doors open for you. They will get you a cup of tea and coffee without you even asking. They will call you sir and ma'am and they will give you stuff. None of that stuff is meant for you. That stuff is meant for the position you hold. It is meant for the level that you have achieved of leader, or success, or whatever you want to call it. Remember that. Remember that lesson of humility and gratitude. You can accept all the free stuff. You can accept all the perks. Absolutely, you can enjoy them. But just be grateful for them and know that they're not for you. I remember getting off the Acela. I took the Acela from New York to Washington, DC. And I got off the train like everybody else. And I was walking down the platform like everyone else. And I walked past General Norty Schwartz, who used to be the chief of staff of the United States Air Force, the head of the Air Force. And here I did, you see a guy in a suit, schlepping his own suitcase down the platform just like me. And just a couple months ago, he was flying on private jets and he had an entourage and other people carried his luggage. But he no longer held the position 
And so now he got to drag his own suitcase. And never did it sort of remind me more that none of us deserve the perks that we get. Leaders only have one thing, they have followers. A follower is somebody who raises their hand and volunteers to go where you're going. They raise their hand and volunteer to go in the direction that you're pointing. Um, and so to lead others means that you have a clear, a clear vision of a world that does not yet exist, a world that could exist. And by articulating that cause, that vision, that purpose over and over and over again, it inspires people who believe what you believe, who want to see that world built, to join, to, to, to go with you, to figure out ways. You know? And so for me, in my work, what leadership means is articulating this world in which the vast majority of, uh, the vast majority of us wake up every single day, inspired to go to work, and come home every single day fulfilled by the work that we do. That doesn't mean we have to like every day, you know, but we can love every day. You don't like your children every day, but you, could, you, but you love your children every day, right? And so the more I talk about this world that does not yet exist yet, because right now the world we live in, the vast majority of people, 90% plus, don't love what they do. They may like it, but they don't love it. Um, when I talk about this world, it inspires others who believe what I believe and want to see this world built, join up and figure out in their own way how to advance that vision so it becomes real. I despise the fact, I lament the fact, I curse the fact that so few people get to say, I love my job, as if they've won some lottery. You know, you go out with your friends and somebody says, I love my job, and everybody goes, oh my God, you're so lucky, right? <laughs> um, uh, that to me is madness. Everybody, the vast majority, should get to wake up and say, I love my job. It is a right, it is a God-given right that we should love where we work, and we should demand it, we should demand that our leaders provide an environment in which we want to come, where we want to care about, we, about each other, where we feel safe to express our vulnerabilities and our fears and our concerns, that we're open to correction and discipline and feedback, that we're not defensive because we know that it's being given to help us improve and grow, and we want to improve and grow, um, and in turn we will help others improve and grow, because when we feel safe, when we feel that our leaders care more about us than a number, they care more about our lives and our confidence and our joy and our skill set more than some short-term gain. That they care more about our priorities than the priorities of some disinterested external constituency. Then we will respond in kind and we will offer our blood and our sweat and our tears and we will make sacrifices of all kinds to see that our leader's vision is advanced and that this company continues to thrive. Not for them, for ourselves. It becomes deeply personal. It becomes something we love contributing to. I talk about it all the time. Working hard for something we don't care about is called stress. Working hard for something we love is called passion. And I'm tired of listening to CEOs saying, we only hire passionate people. What? You don't even know what that means. <laughs> How do you know that they're passionate for interviewing and not passionate for working? You know, pa every person on the planet has passion, right? We just don't all have passion for the same things. Give me something to believe in. Give me something to believe in. Give me the opportunity to contribute to something. Allow me to make mistakes and try again. And you'll have passion up the wazoo. Most leaders think leadership is about being in charge. No, it's not. It's about taking care of those in your charge. Most leaders think everybody works for them. No, nope. you work for the people in your organization. It is your responsibility to take care of them, make them feel safe, and they will naturally want to cooperate and work hard and give you their blood and sweat and tears to advance your vision. All they ask is you take care of them, make them feel valued and valuable, and the rest takes care of itself. It's like a parent, it's like a coach teach them, train them, give them the opportunity to fall and try again. Um, and, and if they fear the leader, then they're going to take steps to protect themselves from the leader.